Whoa, 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 whoa. So are they going to fight or be best buddies? We'll see what happens. Morgan, come here, buddy. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Welcome to your new home. Hey, guys. Today we're introducing our new baby horse, Morgan, to an established herd of two other babies. I'm as nervous as heck to see what's going to happen and how they're going to react. If you watched my last video, I'll link it down below, you'll know that we recently bought Morgan at a sale in Kentucky, and we're now introducing him to Dash, our almost one-year-old colt, he's the gray, and Vista, my friend's 10-month-old filly. These two now need to be separated, and I explain why in that video, so go give it a watch to find out. It's not as simple as just putting Morgan right into the pasture with these two. There are some things that we have to consider before fully integrating them. The first priority has to be safety for all three of them. We just want to try and make it as stress-free as we can, so we need to be closely observing them, picking up on cues and behaviors, which will tell us how to proceed in the safest way possible. Dash and Vista have been together for around seven months now, and they grew up together. They experienced a lot together. They had a lot of their early childhood training done together. They have established their own herd, and it's just the two of them, but it's still a herd. So we have to be mindful of how horses act within herds as part of introducing Morgan. In the wild, a stallion is the head of each herd and in charge of all the females. So we have to assume that in Dash's mind, he is Vista's boss. Dash could instinctively view Morgan as a threat, and he may feel challenged, and that could potentially cause fighting. So while these two silly kids continue to raid my grooming kit in search of treats, let me show you a really funny and excellent example of how horses behave in a herd. For that, you need to meet Tucker and PETA. We got PETA, aka the world's biggest goofball, as a baby, and we knew that he was going to be a handful from the moment we got him. He always manages to make us laugh, like the time he got his hoof stuck in a jolly ball. He's got a larger-than-life personality, and we gave him his name using the acronym Pain in the... He loves to play, he loves toys, and we wouldn't change him for anything. Now my question for you is, do any of you out there own a horse like PETA who's just over the top and silly and fun and getting into trouble all the time? Please let me know in the comments. I want to hear all about them. This is Tucker, and he is PETA's half-brother. They share the same mom. Tucker is so handsome. I just adore his markings. He is very level-headed and kind. And up until recently, I thought he and Peter were complete opposites until I discovered Tucker had broken out of his stall and created chaos in the barn. They live in a herd of four, with Tucker being the alpha, and Peter is ranked number four at the bottom. We've brought this pink unicorn stuffed animal for them to play with. Now, we know who's going to want to play with that toy the most. It's going to be PETA. So let's watch how this pecking order plays out. As I said, Tucker's the head of the herd, so he's the first to inspect. PETA's ranked the lowest, and even though we know he's dying to get at this toy, he goes nowhere near it. He's not interested and walks away leaving number two on the right and number three on the left open to come in and inspect and see if they want to play with it. So it's finally Peter's turn. He had to wait. He didn't dare interject. And he's having the time of his life with this thing. As I said, he really loves toys. Now what's interesting is watch what happens next. So here Peter, he's playing, having lots of fun. And on the right, here's number two. He's decided he wants the toy back. <laughs> Did you steal his toy? And it continues to get even more interesting. Now the toy's back with number three. Watch what happens. Mm -hmm. 
He is literally stepping on that so PETA can't get it. Okay, go PETA, quick, get it. Get it. Quick, PETA. PETA wants the toy, but he doesn't intervene. You can see up here, he's got his ears pinned back. He's not happy about it, but he doesn't overstep. For those of you who are wondering if PETA eventually got the toy, yes, he did, and he was very happy. And I should also add that we don't leave the horses unsupervised with these toys. Back to the babies. We've put them into adjacent pastures so they can get to know one another over the fence. And this is where they will tell us how to proceed with this integration. We're looking for signs that Dash is okay with Morgan being around Vista and if he will let her near him. The boys are curious about one another. However, after watching them all afternoon, we noticed a clear behavior coming from Dash and he wouldn't let Morgan associate with Vista. The signs were subtle but strong. Let me show you. Here you see Vista hanging back while the boys are interacting. The moment Vista shows an interest in Morgan, this happens. Okay, now I'll replay that so you can see again. Vista leans in to see Morgan. And there, Dash quickly interjects and gives her one and two little taps with his nose, signaling her to move away. In this other example, Vista made her way over to the fence and began socializing with Morgan. Dash quickly makes his way over to them, and again, there you go, very subtle, she steps away. This behavior continues, making it clear to us that this could turn physical if they're all together at this point. This is leaving very soon, and we're just going to let them stay in their adjacent pastures and visit over the fence in the meantime. Once the filly has been taken out of the equation, there still could be some confrontation as the boys sort out who will be the alpha. Let me know if you think that Dash will remain on top or if Morgan takes over. I'll be keeping you posted. Thanks for watching.